What's up YouTube? What's up America? What's up world? You just tuned into another great exciting edition of The Power Hour with your host me Power and I am one day behind. I apologize for that but I'm going to treat it like it's Monday. So today is Monday. Y'all know what that means. It's love and hip hop. Pieces up. ATL down style. I'm jumping right into it. The show starts off with Stevie and Mimi at the park. Very nice scene. You know what I'm saying? I like seeing them like that with the baby. But this dude crazy as hell, man. For real. Did he really ask Mimi to do a three-way counseling session between him, Jocelyn, and, and, and Mimi? And, of course, he did. And, of course, Mimi agreed to it, lo and behold. So we know that. So moving right along, the next. And I'm doing the scene by scene today, uh, guys. Um, you got Jocelyn and Carly. That was the next scene. So, um, you know, Carly was just trying to patch things up with him. But, um, I told y'all a couple shows back that them two was going to end up being buddy-buddy. I told y'all that. If y'all go back, I told y'all that they was going to end up being buddy-buddy. But, um, I'm just like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so, you know, they talking about her and Benzino and, you know, Carly, um, talking about, um, how they gonna make good music together, her and Jocelyn. And I'm thinking, bitch, the only way y'all gonna make good music together is if your whole entire listening audience is, I'm sorry, listening audience is, is deaf mute. That's the only way y'all gonna make good music together. But she tells her, guess who I'm dating? I'm dating Benzino. And she said that shit probably, like, who the fuck is Benzino? Like, that motherfucker is like Jay-Z status or Puffy status or something like that. But anyway, the next scene was uh, Scrappy and Sheeta. Uh, and Bucky at the uh, studio. So I'm like, really, dude, y'all, you kiss her in front of Rashida, knowing that Rashida and Erica is cool. That's sloppy, you know, to me. But then he comes talking about, that's my homie. So I'm like, the fuck do that mean when you're talking about a female? That's the, no, he said that's the homie. That's the homie. The hell that mean when you're talking about a female? That that's the homie. You fucking her. Period, point blank. But, you know, ain't nobody stupid to that. Ain't nobody blind to that. But she have told him the, uh, the truth. You know what I'm saying? She was like, Scrap, you know, you need to either be done or not and stop playing around. So I figured, you know, that was the truth. But, um, of course, you know, after that, y'all know she was going to run and tell the girls everything. But did y'all see the way Rashida looked, the look she gave when she hugged uh, Bucky in the studio? Check that out if y'all watch it back. So then the next scene was uh, Benzino and Carly. Um, he trying to do his little thing. He hooked her up again with the photo shoot for his magazine. You know what I'm saying? Now he, you know, he helping her out. Um, I think he helping her out out of pure love. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm wondering is he doing it out of pure love or is, is he doing it to just try to prove something to her management team or something, you know, and, and shit like that. But I'm glad to see a brother helping his sister out. Now that's the truth. But damn, I do think that he is like kind of caking this chick like really hard. You know what I'm saying? He caking her real hard. Speaking of cake, did y'all see that cheap ass chain that she gave Benzina with the piece of the puzzle on it? Let me tell y'all something. I know 285 swap meat jewelry when I see it. And I don't even think that shit was 285 swap meat jewelry. That was some shit that they sell in uh, Chevron's down here in uh, Atlanta. But anyway, the next uh, scene was at the performance. Did y'all see them booty cut shorts that uh, Ariel, uh, Ariana, uh, Auntie Anna, whatever the fuck her name is. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Mimi's little pet. Did y'all see them shorts she had on? I mean, she had all her pussy and her ass hanging out of them shorts. I'm like, ooh, wait. But also, did y'all hear the comment she made? Could you excuse me and make room for K. Michelle's ass? I told y'all, I think Ariana, and she's a beautiful girl, but I think Ariana might like, you know, the kitty cat. You know what I'm saying? So, that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? But anyway, um... So she just said, um, you know, she was talking to the girls, you know, she was like, Kirk wasn't there, and she said, well, I don't even want to talk about it, so she didn't want to talk about her shit, but she go right into gossiping about Scrappy and Bucky, you know what I'm saying? Then, that's girl talk, I know what y'all do. Then K. Michelle, her ghetto ass, well, when Bucky come up, she's talking about, I feel something, I feel some kind of way. Uh, she crazy, that's my girl. K. Michelle ghetto is that, that's my girl, man. Um, what else had happened there? Oh. And I was just saying, like, last week, they let Stevie J sing that bullshit-ass song, like, Mad Versus. Why they ain't let, you know, let us hear Scrappy and, and, and she the song? I'm like, damn, VH1, let us hear the song. So the next scene was Mimi and Ariane. I think I found her name. Ariane or whatever. They was riding in the truck. And I'll just say this. Ariane looked real pissed off when Mimi told her that they, she was going to counseling. In fact, if I'm not mistaken verbatim, Ariane's words was like, I thought it was a rap. She's like, it's a never-ending story. Look. 
I told y'all Ariane wants some of Mimi's birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Y'all can believe me or not. She wants some of Mimi's birthday cake. Trust me. Um, but when they was in the truck, did Jocelyn really, I'm sorry, did Mimi really say that this stupid ass bitch Jocelyn told her, I'm not fucking with Stevie because he got good dick. What a tramp. What a tramp. Jocelyn, you are such a speech impediment tramp. Anyway, the next scene was, uh, and if y'all see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. So what? Uh, the next scene was Michelle and Erica. Now, you know, okay, Michelle was going to run back. And, you know, tell Erica, you know, everything that she saw. And if they're supposed to be girls, then, I mean, I guess that's what she was supposed to do. You know, go and tell her girls. So, I ain't tripping on that. But I'll say this. Erica took her lumps, you know, like a grown-ass woman. You know what I'm saying? And I, she probably told the truth. You know, he'd be running back to her. So, you know, we'll see or maybe we won't see. But I think Erica need to move on because I don't think Scrappy is a family type of dude. You know what I'm saying? That ain't... I'm not saying that he don't love or take care of his kid. That's not what I'm saying. But every person ain't meant to, you know, just be that come home family type of shit. So it is what it is. Now, the next scene was me, me, you know, and them going to the boat and stuff like that. I will say, you know, it was nice to, you know, that was a nice gesture and everything that her and her brother did. But her brother looked like Ali Baba, like a motherfucker, for real. And I'm just saying this, Stevie J, he need to chill out because her brother looks like he can kill and cut his ass up like 26 different ways and had all the body parts. So, who knows? But it was a deep and touching scene, you know, her, you know, saying, you know, the things about her mom and spreading her ashes and stuff like that. I would just say this, that it almost made your boy power cry. I got a little touched up. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the little scene with Benzino at the cigar shop just goes back to what I said a couple uh, uh, segments ago about him caking. He's caking hard. Did this bum ass dude really go buy her an engagement ring? They haven't said what it was yet, but wow. Okay. And did Stevie J open a fucking Corona bottle with his teeth? Okay. Um, so the next scene was uh, Kirk, Rashida, and Miss Deb at the studio or at the meeting or whatever. Kirk walked in looking stupid, that same puppy ass look that he had on his face, you know, last week. But, you know, I just say this, Miss Deb, she just flat out told him, you know what I'm saying, the truth about D-Lo. He, he, Kirk, to me, he act like he makes Rashida's career or whatever, like she wouldn't be nothing without him, I don't know. But Miss Deb was like, you know, you the common denominator, you know what I'm saying? Miss Deb, she got a little salty, she went off. Uh, let me quote her verbatim. She said, uh, this some sick ass shit. She dirty. She's stinking. She just want to come up from air. God damn. Miss Deb was off the chain. She real. Miss Deb said, I want to work with you. I want to take you to the studio, but I want to take you into the studio without Kirk. So I feel her. Kirk just need to understand this shit is about business. It ain't personal. And going back to the thing that it is about business, dudes, you got to understand that you're not handling the business. Period. Point blank. Last but not least, the goodie was them three and the counseling meeting. Jocelyn, Mimi, and Stevie. Stevie is just one of these stupidest motherfuckers that we are going to see on TV talking about all three of them as business partners. But baby, when Mimi walked, I'm not Mimi, I'm messing up. When Jocelyn walked in, sat down and said, uh, so y'all still together? And Stevie said, yeah, she j Get off of me! Get off of me! With her speech impediment ass, she jumped off on that motherfucker and Mimi just sat back like a graceful woman and just watched all that shit and kept her composure and kept her grace as a black woman. I loved it. I loved it. Mimi said, whip his ass, whip his ass for me. Get a couple licks in. So, hey, that's what it is. America, this was a very exciting show. I, I was impressed by this one because the last few shows been, eh, you know what I'm saying? But they had the action going in this one this week. So I loved it. So we're going to see what's going to pop off next week. Um, I guarantee you my show next week will be on time and it will be posted on time. You guys just have to deal with power. I'm traveling uh, back and forth from state to state because I'm a busy man. I'm trying to get it. But, yo, to the world, to America, all my YouTube viewers, I love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. KK. Uh, Miss Tigress, you know y'all my number uh, one loyal fan, so I really appreciate you two guys and all your viewers, and of course Miss Alicia Cole. So you guys keep tuning in. I'm going to keep giving you guys the uh, stories. Yo, I'm mad at y'all, man. Y'all better watch my uh, two shows that I put up there about the, with the babies. Uh, I Hate My Mama and uh, The Bitches Back From The Club. That's some funny shit. Y'all check that out. Thanks for tuning in to The Power Hour. I love y'all. Deuces up, eight times down.